videos. Uh, we video every Sunday gathering, teaching, and put them up on YouTube, and we love to have you watch them. Thank you. Okay, so first Sunday gathering of the new year. It's January 7th, so Happy New Year. Happy New, happy new, new, new Year! year. Happy new year. Okay, so, there it is. so this, <laughs> this Sunday gathering is uh, unique, uh, and uh, we should note it because it was exactly a year ago that we had our first Sunday gathering here at 875 Post. It was actually on January 8th, I yeah, believe. Yeah. It was January 8th, but I think that's uh, 53 Close weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And so we're now in our second year here at 875. Woo! Right. And uh, yeah, I remember when we, you know, it was, it was, that was a huge transition, and it was in the midst of a move, and it was just amazing that we got here at all and did anything <laughs> at all. But it has evolved and grown, and we've changed the orientation and the visuals, and uh, and we're here. And uh, the tenants who live here seem to have accepted us more or less. And uh, <laughs> I know for many of them it must be a little strange that they're here singing and preaching every Sunday. But you know they they generally, and some of them join us, which is even more amazing. <laughs> okay. New Year. So there are three holidays that are mentioned in A Course of Miracles. There aren't many. Uh, Christmas is mentioned quite a few times. Easter is mentioned. And the other one is New Year's. New Year's is mentioned in A Course of Miracles. So I think it's important to focus a little bit on New Year, especially since New Year is mentioned in A Course in Miracles. Hanukkah is never mentioned, though there is some references to lighting lamps, which is really good, which you can use for Hanukkah. And of course, you know, of course, the miracles can be applied to any of the celebrations that we have in this world. But nice to remember that there are three that are mentioned, Christmas, Easter, and New Year. So uh, I'm going to focus in on some of the teachings that A Course in Miracles has uh, about the New Year. Here's one. It says, so will the year begin in joy and freedom. Okay, joy and freedom. So joy, we've just gotten through the holiday season. Had a lot of festivities and love and, you know, interactions with friends and family. So, you know, hopefully it did uh, begin with joy. And freedom. You know, freedom is, is one that maybe we don't think of a lot. But A Course in Miracles is really a teaching about freedom. It is freeing us from the shackles and the thought system of the world and, and the imprisonment, actually, that all of those things have. So we're to begin this year with joy and with freedom. And now it says something really interesting, which nobody really wants to hear. It says, there is much to do, and we have been long delayed. So there's a lot to do here in the new year. And there's a lot to do, and, and Jesus has a lot for us to do. And it's now the time to get on doing it. So... Um, this whole thing about doing and having a lot to do, um, this is a challenge, I think, for many spiritual students and, and many Course in Miracles people. And they like to focus in on the, I need to do nothing. And so thinking that there is actually stuff to do and that Jesus has things for us to do is a little bit challenging. So I do want to acknowledge that. And <clears throat> I think it is something we, we do have to look at. And I think there is a certain value that we have that uh, spirituality should be relaxing in some way. And relaxing somehow seems to contradict all this busy doing, okay? So I just want to just mention it and just, just hang out in that for a while. I get it. But we can relax 
and still be busy. I think that that is the, the really the teaching. That's actually a very Taoist teaching, and it's a teaching that's found in many uh, spiritualities. But I know it's really prominent in Taoism and thus in Zen. It's to be in the quiet center and let everything be done through you while in that quiet center. So. There is that. That's Wu Wei in, in some traditions. And A Course in Miracles, you know, has this idea. And so I do think we have to challenge our values. Uh, and if we have that value that life should be not busy and life should be relaxing, well, A Course in Miracles is going to challenge that. That's all. It's going to challenge that. Mm -hmm. Maybe A Course in Miracles is not your path, if that's really, you know, too strong for you. And maybe it is. Maybe you just need to challenge that value. To learn this course requires willingness to chat a question every value that you hold. Okay, let me repeat that. Willingness to question every value that you hold. All of these values that we have, we have to question. Not one can be kept hidden and obscure but it will jeopardize your learning. <clears throat> no belief is neutral. Everyone has the power to dictate every decision you make. All of these values that we carry, they are not neutral. They will dictate every decision that we make. And we will convince ourselves that we are being guided by the Holy Spirit, but in truth we're just being guided by our values that we haven't actually challenged and that A Course in Miracles is asking us to question. And I see it in the spiritual community, I see it in our local community, I see it in the global community. There are very strong thought forms out there that have been spun and spun and spun and we have to challenge them. They're hard to challenge them. The idea of the traditional committed relationship is one of them. People confront that and they somehow feel less than if they do not have one and then their life becomes a lot about how to get one and even in the enlightened community this is still really really prominent somehow we are lacking or not complete if we do not have that special committed part. we'll call them a holy relationship and spiritualize the whole thing but in truth it's just the value that we need to challenge and we can challenge it and of course the miracles asks us to challenge it. The, the, the feeling like we need a body next to us to always look at and say, oh, I guess I'm okay because I got this body here. That's just valuing the body. Truth is we are in loving relationship with everybody. Look at the loving relationships we have here at Community Miracle Center. We are in loving relationships with everybody and every person, every relationship, regardless of how quote committed or quote casual is, has the power to satisfy us completely in that moment that we're there relating to them. That's what A Course in Miracles says. And I think that's what we have to embrace. Uh, people have the value that I don't own a home. I hear that. Uh, my, my, my wonderful apartment mate got caught up in that one. Uh, <laughs> this, this past week. Something is wrong with my life. I'm never going to own a home in San Francisco. And uh, okay, you know, but that's what A Course in Miracles says. We think these things are, we think a, a little hunk of ground where uh, our home is, is of value. It says a speck of dirt. We think a speck of dirt is of value. I think that's what that refers to. It's that a little piece of land that's got my name on it on some piece of paper in the city hall. I remember that old Joni Mitchell song, we don't need a piece of paper from the city hall. It was talking about marriage, but that's all That's all uh, property is, a little piece of paper in the city hall that's got your name on it. It's just yeah. like totally absurd, but we think that's what's going to make us happy. And the truth is, <clears throat> we don't need anything to make us happy because happiness is our divine right and we can be happy regardless of whatever is going on in our lives. And if we think we have to change our lives in order to be happy, we're just setting ourselves up for disappointment. Nothing has to change for you to be happy but your thinking. And when your thinking is straight, you will be happy, and from happiness and joy, you will be led. So we lead from happiness, we get led from happiness, we don't get led from our values that we haven't challenged. If we do, we're just setting ourselves up for more, more heartache. Okay, <clears throat> another quote 
about the new year. It says, accept the holy instant as this year is born. Okay. And take your place, so long left unfulfilled, in the Great Awakening. And it capitalizes Great Awakening, like it's a thing. It's naming, the Great Awakening. Okay, so in the new year, we're supposed to take our place in the Great Awakening, this movement, this thing that's going on. And it says, make this year different by making it all the same. Let all your relationships be made holy for you. This is your will. Amen. So this year we're supposed to be making everything the same. Everything that we do should be imbued with that same purpose and love and commitment. Every interaction with every person should be a committed relationship. We should be committed to their divinity in every uh, interaction we have with them. And if we are, then we have thousands of committed relationships all the time. And we can just let them evolve and be. And that is the movement that we're supposed to take place in. That is the great awakening. Make everything the same. Make all your relationships the same. Make every interaction you have the same. Now, this idea of this movement, the great awakening, it's actually mentioned twice in A Course in Miracles. It uh, doesn't use the exact same term each time. The other time, it calls it the Great Crusade. So once it's the Great Awakening, the other time it's the Great Crusade. And those of you who are regulars here know the Great Crusade quote because I focus in on it a lot because it's very meaningful for me. And it says, as you share my inability to tolerate lack of love in yourself and others, you must join the Great Crusade to correct it. And again, it's capitalized. So it's, it's this thing, it's this movement, it's the Great Awakening, it's the Great Crusade. Now the next couple of lines, if you study the FIP book, you do not have. But if you study some of the earlier editions, like the original edition, or the Herb Text, or the new Robert Perry edition, then you do have it. <clears throat> and it says, the slogan for the Crusade, see the Crusade, this movement has a slogan. And you all know what it is, it's listen, learn, and do. See. It's the do thing. It's that part that people don't want to hear. That it's about doing. Listen, learn, and do. Listen to my voice. This is Jesus talking. Learn to undo error. And then do something to correct it. It's almost a plea. Do something. You know, if you're not sure what to do, do something. <laughs> do something to correct the error. Do something. It's about doing. It says, and then it, then it really kicks it in. It says, the first two are not enough. Listen and learn are not enough. The real members of my party, this is Jesus talking, the real members of Jesus' party are active workers. Active workers. Do something. The title of my talk today is Happy New Year, Get Busy. <laughs> Happy New Year, Get Busy. We're not here just to rest. We're here to do something. Okay, another a quote from A Course in Miracles that applies to the new year, and I think about it every year at New Year's time. It says, in any situation in which you are uncertain, the first thing to consider very simply is, what do I want to come of this? What is this for? So here we are in a new year. What the new year for? Maybe we're a little uncertain about where to focus our attention and our energy. So it says, ask these two questions. What do I want to come of this? What is this for? The clarification of the goal belongs at the beginning. For it is this which will determine the outcome. So I think it is great and supported in A Course in Miracles to actually have spirit-guided goals for the new year. Have spirit-guided goals. And you know when a great time to set them is? Right now! <laughs> in the beginning of January! In the beginning of the new year! Now! Set those goals! Now, some people call these resolutions. I don't particularly like the term resolution. That's got some negative connotations to it. It's like resolution. I drink too much. I resolve not to drink so much. It's like those kind of things. I eat too much. I resolve not to end. So, a resolution, I mean, actually, even if you look up the definition of the word resolution, a firm decision to do or not do something. And then it gives an example. She kept her resolution not to see Anne anymore. Must be that relationship with Anne wasn't too good. So, <laughs> so it's it's like there there is this little negative tinge to resolution. But go ahead and use it. if you like the word resolution. I'm fine. But I, I I prefer goals. I like I like goals. I like to set goals. Now I've been thinking about it, and I you know think about it with the Holy Spirit. And 
So I've decided not to set year goals, but to set goals uh, that will I will look at again by my birthday, which is June 7th. So it's like basically I'm setting five month goals, <laughs> and then I want to reevaluate them because I figure if I can reevaluate them on my birthday, which is also a great time to set goals from my next year of existence, uh, then I can tweak them a bit. So s simple goals. I want to have a terrific conference. We're having a conference in February. It's going to be terrific, and I just I just want the energy and the people. I just want it to be an amazing experience. So yeah, there's that. I want to have a 2019 conference launched by then. Uh, we're, we're looking at maybe doing a conference in Boston in 2019, so need to get that going and launched. We have the healing team. We started that in 2017. It's great. I got 42 members in the healing team. I want to have 60 members in the healing team by my birthday. I think I want to have 60 people on that team of healers. I think it's going great. You know, of all the uh, 42, the people that have joined the hill, only one person has dropped out, which is really pretty amazing. So, I mean, they, I, I think it, it commits people to the work. They participate, and uh, it's great. So, I want to have 60. I want to handle Reverend Kelly leaving. Reverend Kelly is uh, planning to move to Washington. I still do not want her to go. <laughs> I want that really clear. I'm not in favor of this. But if she's leaving, I'm going to support her in that, and that's her, you know, guidance, and, and, and I need to handle it, and I need to do whatever we need to do. Maybe that means getting a new assistant minister here, I'm working on that a little bit. Maybe the new assistant minister is a part-time person, maybe it's a first-time person, a full-time person, that all needs to be evolved, yeah, but i got to handle Reverend Kelly leaving, and I think by June, uh, I should have a pretty good evaluation of how I'm doing with that. And if I need a little mid-course correction, then I'm going to need to mid-course. Our average attendance here at a Sunday gathering is 11, which is exactly what we have here today. So in 2017, we averaged 11 people on a Sunday gathering, and sometimes much lower, sometimes much higher. And today it's just the average. Uh, but I want to increase that to 15. I think we can increase it. I think we, you know, when we moved here, it was real challenging to some people. And some people didn't like it at first. It took them a while to get used to it. it. Took them a while to get used to the space. It took us a while to get used to the space. We changed. We moved. We added the curtains, and you know. But we're here, and we like it. And I think people have gotten more used to it. They got more used to the parking, and all the things. And so, I want uh, to increase our our average attendance to 15. So please keep coming. Uh, <laughs> I have exercise goals. I have weight goals. I have a goal of having a new intimate relationship. I want a new intimate relationship. I have some intimate relationships, but I am polyamorous, and I, I like a new relationship every once in a while. It really, there's just something about that intimate connection and, and the different areas of your psyche that get stimulated when you connect with somebody new. I want a new intimate relationship by my birthday. That's a good goal. Okay, so those are some of my goals that I've come up with so far. Those are my goals. I'm setting goals. And that'll keep me pretty busy, but that's okay. I'm supposed to be busy. Happy New Year. Get busy. Okay, another, another quotation from A Course in Miracles about the New Year. It says, uh, well, this, this actually is probably being taught to us uh, just right before the New Year, but... Okay, it says, this is a weekend in which a New Year will be born from the time of Christ. Okay, so Christmas was the time of Christ. So it's right around Christmas time. Jesus is telling us, get ready. This is the weekend. We're going to birth a new year. I have perfect faith in you to do, okay, get it? to do all that you would accomplish. Nothing will be lacking, and you will make complete and not destroy. So Jesus has faith in us. So we can have faith in our goals that we set with Jesus and the Holy Spirit's help. Jesus has faith in us to accomplish our goals. We will do all that we would accomplish with Spirit, with Jesus. And then it says this, which is a, a really interesting pledge and oath and, and vow, actually. I always thought this would be a great vow to use in a real enlightened marriage ceremony. I have never convinced any of the people I've married to use this vow. <laughs> <laughs> say and understand this. See how, see how well this work would work for a marriage vow? <clears throat> I give you, Lee, to the Holy Spirit as part of myself. I know that you will be released unless I want to use you to imprison myself in the name of my freedom, 
I, I will your release because I recognize that we will be released together. Now, wouldn't it be great in a, in a relationship, in a, in a marriage ceremony, that what you got up there, what you said, I'm totally releasing you to the Holy Spirit. I totally, you know, it's just like, that would be terrific, wouldn't it? Instead of, you know, till death do us part, and I'll, I'll, help you, I'll help you when you're sick. I mean, you don't really. It's so negative, our usual wedding book. Anyway. <laughs> So then it says, this quiet center in which you do nothing will remain with you, giving you rest in the midst of every busy doing on which you are sent. So there, there's that busy doing thing again. So that comes right at the end of the I need do nothing section. So people always focus on the I need do nothing, I need do nothing, and in my Facebook discussion groups, I get flagged all the time. I need, it's all about your, it's not really I need do nothing. It's, you don't read the section far enough. Read the section. <laughs> because you have to have a quiet center of doing nothing out of need, which means doing nothing out of lack. You are not lacking. You don't need to do anything to fulfill a lack, but if you can come from that sense of completion and wholeness, then you can get busy and do all that Holy Spirit wants you to do. So this quiet center in which you do nothing will remain with you, giving you rest in the midst of every busy doing on which you are sent. It's the new year. It's still the first week. Plenty of time to still set goals. Plenty of time to think about what Holy Spirit and Jesus want for you to do. Happy New Year. Get busy. That's it. Thank you.